Dear friends, as we await the festival of Christmas, let us prepare ourselves so that we may understand its deeper meaning. Let us hear in lessons from Holy Scripture how the prophets of Israel foretold that God would visit and redeem his people. In these challenging times when nations and peoples are divided and families isolated, let us rejoice in the words and music that remind us that God is with us and that we are not alone. As we recall the themes of Christmas, we affirm God's good intention for all people and his unconditional love for all creation. But first, let us pray for the world which God so loves, for those who have not heard the good news of God or who do not believe it, for those who walk in darkness and the shadow of death, and for the church in this place, across our diocese and throughout the world, that it may always show forth the light of the love of God. These prayers and praises let us humbly offer to God in the words that Christ himself gave us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us in the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The prophet proclaims good news to a people in exile. 
Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will rise upon you, and his glory will appear over you. Nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Thanks be to God.
God promises to send his people a righteous king. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch, and he shall reign as a king and deal wisely, and shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In his days, Judah will be saved, and Israel will live in safety. And this is the name by which he will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. Thanks be to God. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem. Lo, your king comes to you, triumphant and victorious is he, humble and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. He will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the war horse from Jerusalem, and the battle bow shall be cut off, and he shall command peace to the nations. His dominion shall be from sea to sea, and from the river to the ends of the earth. Thanks be to God.
God promises his servant will bring peace and righteousness. Here is my servant, whom I uphold, my chosen, in whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit upon him. He will bring forth justice to the nations. He will not cry or lift up his voice or make it heard in the street. A bruised reed he will not break and a dimly burning wick he will not quench. He will faithfully bring forth justice. He will not grow faint or be crushed until he has established justice in the earth. Thanks be to God. The prophet foretells the glory of the kingdom of God. The wilderness and the dry land shall be glad. The desert shall rejoice and blossom. Like the crocus, it shall blossom abundantly and rejoice with joy and singing. The glory of Lebanon shall be given to it, the majesty of Carmel and Sharon. They shall see the glory of the Lord, the majesty of our God. Strengthen the weak hands and make firm the feeble knees. Say to those who are of a fearful heart, Be strong, do not fear. Here is your God, he will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then the lame shall leap like a deer and the tongue of the speechless sing for joy. For the waters shall break forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. The burning sand shall become a pool and the thirsty ground springs of water. Thanks be to God.
the angel Gabriel greets the Blessed Virgin Mary. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favoured one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and wondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favour with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be holy. He will be called the Son of God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. Thanks be to God. John the Baptist proclaims the coming Messiah. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. John proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me 
I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptised you with water, but he will baptise you with the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God. of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight O Lord our strength and our Redeemer Amen Thank you Peter for this warm welcome and for all the preparations that has gone into the service together with the choir and Malcolm and all that has been happening over the last few days especially and to our wine carrier Kathy Carden for ensuring that all the staff are here today. Thank you. Today, in fact, we begin to develop further our theme, Accept That Synod, our vision statement, to walk in the way of Christ. And I've set out as we embarked at the Synod and a few meetings following that we will go to various parts within our diocese over the next few years as we walk in this way of Christ. Hopefully over the next five years we would be able to go to all of our churches, whether the bigger ones or the little ones, wherever they may be. And then to walk together, to come together, to pray together and to be together. Because the reality is that over the past two years, we were separated more than ever, though we were connected in other ways. And so it will be today here at Aubrey, one of the oldest churches, or the oldest church within the diocese according to the foundation stone. Next, we will go to the Mother Church on the 13th of March at 2.30 p.m when we will gather for the 120th celebration of the diocese since the enthronement of the first bishop of Wangaratta. 
And late in the year, we will go to the oldest church, as they claim, in Victoria, as part of the Diocese of Wangaratta. And that is at Christ Church Kilmore, where this church has just been completed about 14 or 15 months ago, and finally blessed um, the entrance a few months ago in August. And then we hope that we will make the trip to Koryong, to Yarrawonga, to Harrietville, to Mariasville, to Shepparton, to Rushworth, to Murchison, and even to Nagambi, that we'd be able to go to Ye, that we'd be able to go to places like Alexandra, that we'd be able to meet in Seymour, and even in Avenel, where we have only one person left, but the congregation has decided to come together to worship together on a Saturday evening that we'd be able to go to the Longwoods of the world, that we'd be able to go to the Euroas of the world, to the Mansfielders, to Benalla. Unfortunately, there's no Gurumbat any longer. But there is still Swanpool who will celebrate a significant event next year. In fact, it was this year, but because of lockdowns, they were not able to come together. Nevertheless, we will walk in the way of Christ, as we make our way through the Alpine Valley, as we go through Beechworth, as we go through Yakandanda, as we go through Tawonga, as we go through all those places that sometimes feel sidelined, places like Talangata, yes, places like Northern Albury, together with Jindra, together with Taguna, where they're not having services any longer. And I pray that as we begin this walk, we will walk together as God's people and that we will gather at these various opportunities to just be together, to celebrate together and to walk together as our theme will remind us. So this is the vision of the diocese and I hope that for the next five years we'll be able to do this at times when we can come together. And I'm often told that Rome was not built in one day, and neither can we take this walk. There was always this concept of people walking or bishops walking within their diocese. I've had a good walk last year, and I lost 18 kilos. <laughs> Myself and Catherine landed up at the same endocrinologist the other day, and we've discovered that I've picked up eight of those kilograms again. <laughs> so the walk will start but genuinely not from the one place to the other place. I will get out of my car in front of the church and walk in, but at least we will walk together. So I commend this process to you, and I remind especially our stipendary clergy of this diocese that when I call us together, I would want the support of you within this, because you are the ones who need to take this ministry further within the context of our diocese within your parishes because this is where the building blocks will start wherever we find ourselves and so last year Advent 2020 I had my first official Episcopal Sunday visit to St. Matthew's Aubrey after almost a nine-month period of being invited for Palm Sunday we all know what happened the beginning of lockdowns and then the staggering reopenings with very small numbers and then lockdowns and reopening and more lockdowns again. It was a rather frustrating time, but what a joy and glory to be able to be here on Advent Sunday again. What a joy and privilege we had even last year when we had our first synod at the end of November 2020. What a joy because life almost looked normal though we are aware of a very new normal. For those of us in Victoria especially, there were many donor days, zero days, cases of COVID-19, as we then took to the beaches and lived life as normal as possible, or as they would say, happily ever after. We were excited about the season of Lent with Ash Wednesday on the horizon, and then I remember clearly, a few hours later, we were into lockdown again. And not only have we missed 
Good Friday and Easter in 2020. But there in 2021, at the beginning of Lent Ash Wednesday, which almost now concludes the cycle of what we've missed out as the people of God. And I'm sad because we know how people felt missing those most holy days, not being able to carry the Paschal candle into the church, not being able to ponder upon the cross, but instead we've come together significantly and wonderfully, connecting with so many people through the Zoom application, through online services and ways and means by just being together. In fact, we've learned how we can be church in a whole new different context. How blessed are we that during the pandemic, as we've been able to gather for Advent 2020, we are able to gather here today. How blessed are we because we will be able to celebrate Christmas as we have in 2020, with the hope and probability of the easing of who knows many more restrictions for Christmas 2021. Maybe this will be a time when all will be welcomed and all will feel welcomed without that which have regulated our lives for such a long time, especially over the past two years. Around the globe, however, we know it is not the same for many, as firstly, many countries have closed the borders with the place of my birth and some of us who are here today, and travel restrictions are on the increase again, even within the states, within Australia. There is the sphere of the Omicron variant and how this will affect us. There are various sayings about what this could do and what this could mean, but we do not know because the fear is there already. And obviously there, are, there is the plight of those who are still struggling of whether or not they must be vaccinated. Last year we reflected on the hope for the year 2021 and discovered that the challenges continued with the escalation of COVID cases and this new variant then called, and even now, Delta, causing havoc within our communities. Some manage well through keeping their state borders closed and excellent contact tracing, while for some we saw more snap lockdowns and then shyer lockdowns to ensure that there would be freedom of movement for people within a particular community. And where there were no cases previously. All of a sudden, there were cases. This applies to both Victoria and New South Wales. And one of the people working as an infection control person with the department, Leslie Lewis, often says and said that this is a marathon, not a sprint. We will not get through this very easily. We were driving zero cases, and now we have learned to accept the inevitable. So these things will continue. But we thank God for the opportunity that has been created through the vaccine, where more people can come together and celebrate and live life almost as per normal. I know for me, one of the most difficult times within the state of Victoria was being separated from our son who was down in Melbourne. It was the most difficult time for me as a parent, knowing that seven years ago we came as four of us. It was difficult on the 20th of January this year when he separated from us to go move into that space. But very difficult when a child phones you, or at least his mother, at 1 a.m. in the morning trying to want to make conversation. It was very difficult because many of us were not able to connect with one the other. We now have freedom of movement within the state of Victoria. We now have freedom of movement within New South Wales. I would really love to get to Queensland and I think it is possible, but for those who need to get there, I pray that they will be able to get there. 
There are those who want to get to South Australia. And we've got to follow these travel restrictions and do the kind of things that we need to do. Dino was lucky, he says, because he came in and he came through quarantine free. Things are so different now. We have freedom of movement because in Victoria, just over 91% of people have been doubly vaccinated. In New South Wales, almost 93%, 92.8 for those 16 and above. And so there is this hope. And if Christmas is about this hope and freedom of movement to connect and to celebrate the event of Christ's birth, I look forward to it. So therefore, on Christmas Day, we will get into our vehicle. We will have to give up the wonderful ham and all of the things that we normally have to be with our son and to celebrate with him. And I'm sure many will be connecting as well. And so there is hope. There is hope, the hope that Christmas brings. There is hope that we'll be able to spend time together as we celebrate the birth of Christ. This past year, I have concluded many of my letters referencing John's prologue in the Gospel, that our hope is in the Word made flesh. As we remember the Word made flesh, and He who came to dwell among us, let us also remember not those who feel isolated, but also those who feel excluded within life today. Those of you at the cathedral this morning might have heard me saying this. Let us remember those who feel excluded by their own church community, those who are excluded by the very ones who need to care for them. For it's not only isolation, but it's also exclusion. Let us remember those who will be excluded those will be, in a sense, discriminated against should the Religious Discrimination Bill be enacted. There are many opinions and statements floating around. And a few weeks ago, through a simple picture which I've stolen from somebody else, I have expressed my own thinking and feeling. A few months ago, I've expressed my opinion regarding the use of the Lord's Prayer in Parliament. And I've said expressively, that we live in a multicultural, multi-faith, multi-religious and also non-faith and non-religious society where we need to appreciate, respect and honour the views of all people. When I did my Australian citizenship test of two years ago, it was and it still is my understanding as we read through those booklets that Australia is deemed as a secular state and that no religion or faith should be advanced over the other. I've always believed and I will continue to believe in equal opportunity for all of God's people. As a person who adheres to the Christian faith, a person who practices this Christian tradition, I will continue to pray for others is what I said, but also respect the expression of their faith their understanding or whether they have no faith. As I do believe that we are all part of this global village, part of this human family. In the true sense of the word, I believe that we are distorting the image of a loving and all accepting Christ. When parliamentary legislation potentially enables exclusivity instead of inclusivity, or maybe rationalizes the dehumanization of people who are different from others. Understandably, there are those who feel the need to protect and sustain the operational structure, but this should never be at the exclusion of others. There will be many differing opinions regarding this, and we have taken the view within Bishop in Council the other day that we'll wait and see, but I pray that we will be a church and a diocese as we walk in the way of Christ, that will be ones who will include others and not exclude them. One who would welcome and not reject. A church who will build up and not destroy. 
and a church that will remain true to the gospel value of the unconditional love and the abundance of the overflowing grace of God who loves all whom God has made and found it to be very good. I hope that we'll be able to hold on to the endearing qualities of the Word made flesh who came to dwell and live among us. And so I pray that we will continue to grow in this hope as we celebrate this Christ event. And may this hope lead us to new and exci an exciting year where all our dreams and plans will come to fruition, especially as I hope we will emerge from this COVID pandemic. I pray especially that as we light the different candles of Advent in the Advent wreath, Sunday after Sunday, that we will live in the hope of the peace which we find in the love of our Lord Jesus Christ, which will bring true joy to all of us. May as we wait for the celebration or the adventus or coming or arrival of the Prince of Peace, that we will indeed find this hope in the Word made flesh who came to live and dwell among us. But more so, May we find those very same qualities as we live our lives with and alongside of each other and as we become true proclaimers of the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Faithful God, whose promises stand unshaken through all generations, renew us in hope, that we may be awake and alert, watching for the glorious return of Jesus Christ our Saviour, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. Lord God, you are ever among us. Open our eyes to your presence, that your church may be true to its mission, and that we may proclaim your goodness, show forth your glory, and walk in your light all our days, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. God of the southern sea and of these islands, and of all who dwell in our land, we give you thanks and praise for our country and for what we have achieved together. Increase our trust in one another, strengthen our quest for justice, and bring us to unity and a common purpose. Make us of one mind. And we make this prayer through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May God the Father make us worthy of a peace of a place in his kingdom. Amen. May God the Son, coming among us in power, reveal in our midst the promise of his glory. Amen. May God the Holy Spirit make us steadfast in faith, joyful in hope, and constant in love. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen.
before the uh, dismissal, you can see, of course, why at St Matthew's I so look forward to the end of the service because I just love the desk cat at the end of each, uh, each service and uh, it's really very special, isn't it, to share the gift of music and I'm so very grateful not only to our wonderful choir and our musicians but everyone in the parish um, and also all the people who have been in the parish um, even the people who burnt the place down, I suppose, and, uh, and rebuilt it. Uh, the a wonderful story that this uh, parish has been part of the diocese as well. So all of those parish stories that make up the whole diocesan story, uh, what a really wonderful gift that is at Christmas time. And also I'd like to say that in this period when we have been so interrupted um, in uh, daily parish life that we've had to find out new ways of serving our community and so often those have been moments of uh, sadness and challenge and in the last little while I'd like to say that um, uh, there was uh, a funeral of a child uh, we took very recently and, um, and the parish was just fantastic in the way that they in the most imaginative way came forward. Uh, we had the fellows from the youth brigade at the back of the church made a little coffin. Uh, we had the pastoral care team um, who cared for that young girl who was entirely by herself um, and people who came together even to pay for the funeral. And it was so often we, we travel in very, in very sad moments. Isn't it wonderful to be able to join together in moments of joy and happiness? So isn't it wonderful to be together as part of a Dawson family and to do something which is truly joyful? Thank you so much to the bishop and uh, the kindness of those who actually brought the wine. Thank you very much. Another miracle. Uh, and uh, also, Michelle uh, Best is here hiding somewhere, aren't you? Aren't you? You haven't left? No. I'd like, like to come down here because during this period we've been thinking about um, little acts of kindness uh, rather than little acts of landfill. And our, um, our group of our ladies have been making some beautiful things across here. And we thought we might send you away with a little token um, of their, their kindness. And it's full of covers in sequins. And it's about reflecting light and joy. So we thought we might give you this and uh, pin it to you as a little badge of honour, a badge of joy as we look forward to uh, Christmas. So um, Sadie Moffat, who's been here for many, many years, uh, she's going to come forward. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, on behalf of uh, the uh, people in our parish, just uh, just pin this bit of joy to you, so that when you go around, sparkling as you do, um, that you'll be able to uh, say, "Well, this came from the far, far flung part of the of the, of the diocese, across the great water." Um, but we're all part of that same family, so there you go. Thank you. Would you be able to pin that on? There we go. What what little joy that is! And just in case, this is a Christmas tree. There we are. It's a Christmas tree. It's covered in sequins. It's handmade in Albury. <laughs> Is that all right? Look this way. Look this way. Thank you. Holding it up. This is for posterity. That's a good news for sharing. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. A little, little round of applause. Thank you very much. And I'd like to thank you also um, to the uh, different parts of the diocese that's been able to keep us all connected and also um, the technology that's enabled us to um, be the church in very different ways. So again, thank you uh, so much for, for leaping forward uh, when you did. So, and that's marvellous. And also uh, in, in Advent. Uh, to look forward and I've been looking forward to the end of the service from the beginning of the service because uh, of the wonderful poster we're just about to have um, and so uh, thank you each one of you and do stay for the hospitality we're going to be going out that way then I'd invite you to come back this way and you'll receive uh, a glass of wine and a COVID safe bit of supper there we are and thank you to all those people who have been involved um, and now our dismissal from the bishop thank you Go in peace to love and serve the Lord, ready to meet him when he comes again in glory. Amen. Amen.